I'm curious just if you could describe a little bit for the listeners, you know, what, what your faith is, Kevin, and, and just what impact you feel it's had on, on you and your life and also the results you've been able to produce for yourself and others. Uh, so when I was 16, I went to a Bible conference and it was the first time I really got taught what was in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, and how that uh, related to Jesus, who's Christ. Obviously, the uh, most of the Jewish people, they don't believe Jesus is the Christ, right? Uh, and, and the New Testament, which is written in Greek, and now translated into all these languages, testify that Jesus was the Christ. For me, when I um, realized the association between the two uh, parts of the Bible, the Old Testament and New Testament, and why Jesus is the Christ, why his death, why he had to shed blood in order for forgiveness of sin, which is kind of the basis of this whole law of loving God and loving your fellow man, right? How How is sin dealt with, you know? So when I realized that, oh, sin, life is is represented by blood. And when you sin, that that punishment or wages of sin is death and so to solve the problem of sin and death life has to be paid like life the price of life has to be paid and that price is in blood right and so for that no man can pay for his own sins you can try but you know it's it's like a futile, futile effort right so anyways when i realized that that's why christ had to die for all people's sins, it, it was just, it connected for me. And so that's when I was 16, people call it a born again experience or salvation. You know, it's like a new birth. We're all born upside down head first, and then you have to be born right side up. Uh, and I, one of my other role models was uh, another uh, David, like John D. Rockefeller. I think D stands for David, right? So I have a lot of Davids as my role model. David, uh, King David and Goliath. David is a huge role model for me. He had many sins too, right? Bathsheba and adultery and he killed her husband, murder. Um, but David Livingston was another huge influence for me. So on my path, what I, what I was thinking is I'm going to be a doctor and I'm going to be a missionary doctor like Dr. David Livingston, who went to the heart of Africa uh, and kind of spent his life devoted um, to helping people of, of need, right? Um, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And so that, that was kind of my ethos as uh, wanting to help people. Uh, first, it was physical. Then it became, okay, emotional and also spiritual. Uh, and, and then I took this turn, right, into being an entrepreneur. Uh, so I never left um, health, the health aspect, and that notion of helping people on all those three levels, physical, mental, and spiritual. Um, and I tried to inject that into how I conduct business. So for me, my core is my, my faith and the love that comes from it. Um, and I always seek wisdom from above. I try to because I realize I'm very foolish most of the time, my thoughts, my actions, right, and behaviors. So how to get more wisdom is like one of the principal things. So one of the things in the Bible, uh, in Proverbs, Solomon says, you know, he's supposed to be the wisest person in all history. He says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. And from wisdom comes all the fruits. Like when Solomon asked for wisdom, he said, not only will I give you wisdom, but I will also give you uh, riches and honor. And if you obey me, I will also give you a long life. But Solomon kind of did not retain wisdom in his old age, and he didn't live a long time. I, I'm guesstimating he probably lived into his 60s. It's not not a full life, right? Because people, you know, have the capacity to live to 120. Uh, we know the oldest person documented is around 120. And there, but very few people actually get past 115. You know, maybe 10 to 15% can hit the 100 year mark. Um, and our, our average age, 
being 80 now, right? But I think it's not just about the longevity of life. It's, it's how, what you do with the time that you have. So you have people who like Mozart only lived to 35, but look what he did, right? Um, Chopin, I think he lived to like 38. A um, lot of the poets like Byron, Shelley, right? They only lived into their mid thirties, uh, but astounding what they were able to produce, right? They might not have been recognized during their time, but it's, it's so amazing that their, their heart and their works um, have lasted this long. So whether you live, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, or you live a hundred, like what, what are you doing? And so that's, what's interesting about flow it's like, how do you remove all the constraints and live according to what's in your heart and not based on what other people are saying? So I think when you have a core foundation of faith, it's bedrock. You, 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 beca you can become your own person because you're not, um, you know, it's like you're building your house on rock versus on, on sand. Um, and when you think about your life goal uh, or your life purpose, you know, what is it? I, I often ask people who, um, you know, young people, people who come in to work for the first time, what's your life goal? And, you know, like, I'm, I, I'm not really sure. I was, well, you know, everything that's been designed in the world has a purpose, like a chair has a purpose, right? You could use it for other purposes, but it's been designed in a certain way. And I believe that each of us are gifted with our unique experiences and unique gifts that allow us to uh, impact or influence the world and the people in the world and the things in the world a certain way. But you have to let it flow, right? You have to let your heart, you have to be allowed um, and to dream and to believe that those dreams are the things that you are purposed and destined to do. So for me, that's where uh, faith is that bedrock for me to allow me to do all these other things, despite any, any differences in opinions or critical feedback from others, right? Because everybody will have a different perspective or paradigm. Um, but at the end of the day, I believe that we are eternal beings, that we are spiritual beings in a physical body, and this physical body will one day die. I don't think anybody will escape that. So what is that spirit being developed and being free to do, which we call our heart? Even in business, we call it entrepreneurial spirit, right? So you got to let that heart and the thing inside you that is trapped on a, in a prison of criticism or what's kosher in the world. And I think the people who have done that in history, you might have heard about that because They've done, they didn't conform to what the world was saying. This is the box that you should all live in. It's kind of like matrix. So uh, it's a long answer, but I think it's really important for people to have something that is bedrock for them. And for that, it's state for me. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Thank you.